Hello and welcome to the Business Programme. I'm Liz Hay and today I'll be exploring the Federation of Small Businesses or FSB with my special guest Barney Minot, Development Manager for the SFB based here in West Yorkshire. Hi Barney. Hi Liz, thanks for inviting me along today. And welcome to the programme. Now most of us who either run businesses or are familiar with the small business sector will have encountered the Federation for Small Businesses but for those who haven't or are starting out in business for the first time, can you briefly explain your role and how you serve the business community? Yeah, as the name suggests, the Federation for Small Businesses is a membership organisation for small businesses. And by small, we're, we're talking about from a sole trader all the way up to up to 250 employers, employees. And the Federation of Small Businesses helps our members by providing them with services such as cheap insurance, uh, a 24-hour legal hotline, uh, HR support, all the documents you need to run a business. But more importantly than that, we're also the voice for small businesses. And this is really important because you might not know it, but 99% of all businesses in this country are small or medium-sized businesses. And too often they don't get their voice heard by government and local councillors. And so we're here to put the voice of small businesses to them and let them know exactly the sorts of things they need to do to help small businesses. And that's really important. You know, half the people employed in the private sector are in small businesses. They need to get this support. So we're there for them. We're always very open to members. And what's really crucial as well is that we take pride in being member-led. We're an entirely member-led organisation from our chairman who is elected by the members all the way down to the local activists working here in Huddersfield, Dewsbury, Cleckheat and all across Kirklees to try and make sure that small businesses are heard where they need to be heard. And what part do you play in encouraging self-employment as an option from school leavers up to those who are keen to exit employment and start their own companies? It's a really live issue for this, this one. Uh, we've just actually started a campaign called Think Self-Employed and we were motivated to do this because there's almost five million people in this country self-employed and yet it still isn't really promoted we don't feel or, or, or valued a, as a real career choice young people don't you know often they'll get told to you know, look at working for organizations whether that's in the private sector or public sector but very rarely do they get that, get that you know advice to go out and, and set up their own business so we, we set, we've done this uh, campaign, we've just launched it a couple of weeks ago and the aim is to try and get people to really think of self-employment as something they can do and also to value self-employment, give it the real value it deserves because if you are self-employed you don't get you know, the same rights always as those who are employed so you, may, you won't get the same paternity rights or you won't get the same pension support which is really important obviously uh, to make sure we, we can all retire when we want or with, mm -hmm. with, with the money we need and also things like uh, universal credit which the government's introduced it really doesn't work for self-employment where your income can fluctuate week by week month by month so we need to get that sorted and i think here in huddersfield it's really interesting because i think you've got some really good resources to help this as well i mean i was uh, very recently over at the duke of york enterprise center doyek which is based mm -hmm. in the 3m bic building and i swung to uh, a student there he's in his second year at university and he was working with Doik to help set up a business. So in a year's time when he leaves university, he's going to set up his own business and be self-employed. And I just think that's, that's tremendous that here in Kirklees, here in Huddersfield, you've got that, that support for young people to do this and they don't have to think self-employment is not for me, it's for someone else. Because it's a great way of, you can be your own boss, you can do the things you want to do, you've got time, to just your own time, you can shape it as you want. And Every single business that now exists in this country had to start somewhere. And if we don't get people starting those businesses, where are the businesses of the future? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And is there much funding support available, Barney, for new start-up businesses? Well, there is some funding available. Unfortunately, not as much as there may have been a few years ago. If you're in this area, the best place to start to look for funding is the Kirklees Business Hub, which is set up by the council and it's a, a one stop shop website where you can find out all the stuff there. There are was, there was small startup loans, uh, there are also loans that the uh, Northern Powerhouse Fund has as small loans available. Uh, but there isn't the money there that I think the FSB would like to see and so we continue to make, make the case for funding to be there. But the other thing that's important, if you're thinking of setting up a business in this area, mm -hmm. the, there are a couple of people at the council uh, who are called uh, business, small SME business advisors and they can help people and, and it, it's really worth 
going to see them and trying to find out what help is available. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that is crucial, and this is where the FSB can really come in, is that the best advice you're going to get if you're trying to set up a business is to talk to somebody who's already done it. They will know the pitfalls, they'll know the shortcuts, they'll know what works, they'll know what doesn't. They will have spent time and money on things they know now they shouldn't have and they can give that mm -hmm. advice to you. So always there's a support there in terms of funding, there's a support there in terms of what the council can do, but your best support is going to be talk to those who've done it. And if you don't know where to start, if you don't know where people are, have a look on the FSB website mm -hmm. and talk to us because we will find people who have started up businesses and also we know a lot of people who are more than happy mm. to help people start up businesses because they're passionate about small businesses, passionate about self-employment. Yep. And where do you recommend uh, small businesses go to find like-minded people um, to grow and of course to collaborate? Yeah, I mean, as I've said, yeah, if, you're, if you're wanting to start up a business, you really need to talk to those who've already done it. And there are some great opportunities that FSB have across Kirklees. We've got regular monthly networking in Huddersfield at the 3M BIC building. We, we've got some over in Dewsbury. And we've also do monthly events now at Hub 26, which is a great new business centre in Cleck Heaton. So by all means, come along. You know, you, uh, you'll find us on the website. You can come along and find where we are. Come and see us. But what I would say is there's lots of other opportunities out there. You know, I'm quite happy for people to go to other organisations' events. Sure. There's some brilliant things out there. And I mean, I, I talk regularly to the Chamber of Tr uh, Commerce. You know, we all want to work together because we're all passionate about getting businesses up and running. And we know that, and there's evidence to support this, we know that businesses who talk to each other, people who are prepared mm -hmm. to go out and network are more likely to be successful in running their business. So we want to help that. We want to set up opportunities. So what I'd say is, if, if you want to go out and try and find people, especially if events are free, just go and find it. I mean, the worst you're going to do is, is you're going to waste a couple of hours. But it mm -hmm. could be that you make that crucial contact that can could make all the difference to your business. You know, it could be someone who in years to come you think, I'm so glad I met that person because they've helped me get where I am now. Absolutely. Um, and how important then is the FSB's advocacy role? You talked a little bit about yeah. in, in your introduction about that, but how crucial is that I to mean, small businesses? I think it's absolutely crucial. It's, it's the reason really why the FSB was set up. We were set up back in 1974 by a group of business uh, owners in the north of England who were protesting about uh, a raising tax on, on the self-employed and that sort of passion for changing the environment in which businesses operate that's where we started and it's where we are now it really is at the center of everything we do and we, we've made some uh, great we've had some great successes in recent years you know you can look at things like we've uh, got uh, reduction in, in national insurance through the employer allowance for small businesses, business rates for smaller companies, smaller businesses. We've managed to get some, get some. Uh, if you know, it, the smallest businesses don't pay any business rates now. That's down to FSB's lobbying, uh, and it really is just what we're about. Because as I said earlier at the very beginning, 99% of businesses mm. are small or medium-sized businesses, yeah. and yet when you, you you see telly, you're watching the telly, and you're seeing people talking about business or business people. So often they're representing the big companies who are great companies and do a lot for this country. And, but they're different to small, to small businesses. They have different needs. And we're the only people there really who are on a national scale standing up and saying, this is what small businesses need. And a really small example of this, which it sounds sort of a bit insignificant, but, but it shows how we operate and why, why what we do is important. Last year, a member in Harrogate came, came to us and said, I'm paying business rates twice because I'm seen as having two properties, even though it's in the same building. Yeah. I'm on one floor, I've got two floors in the same building and they're paying twice. And this was dubbed the staircase tax. In the last budget, we got that scrapped. And it came from a member saying to us, why am I doing this? And we took it all the way up to the chancellor and we got it changed. And that's what, how the FSB operates. And that's why, that's why you know, the advocacy role is so important to us because no one else, no one else is doing this and no one else can do it. Mm -hmm. And what would you say are the biggest challenges facing small businesses currently? I mean, there are many millions of small businesses and each one will have a different challenge, but there are some challenges that are quite universal or, or things yeah. that people face, a lot, of, you know, a lot of businesses are facing. And unfortunately, a lot of these also are stubborn problems. You know, they've been around for a while. We, the, one issue that we always campaign on and we always raise is bad payment. You know, it, People, 
bigger companies are not always paying their suppliers when they should mm -hmm. and the amount they should. And that's, we call it an epidemic actually, and, and that's really holding back a lot of businesses in this country. And, and we're really pleased that the, go the government's starting to hear us. And, and there is uh, a small business commissioner who's, who's now uh, looking at some of these things and, and we're trying to, trying to improve this. There's, there's other issues that come up, like uh, a big issue is always, and I'm sure you've heard this one, business rates, mm -hmm. which is a really tricky issue, and, and especially with the rise of, of the internet and, and, and online shopping, it, it means that a lot of people feel they're at a disadvantage if they're a lot of retailers, and so there's that issue there, and it also affects uh, companies, who, who, you know, offices as well. The other, obviously, huge issue at the minute is Brexit, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, we, we're, we're, we've been calling for a Brexit that's good for small businesses and, and more than anything we want to make sure that small companies can continue to buy and sell goods abroad. I mean often people when they think about export and they think of the, the big companies again mm -hmm. but 20% of small businesses already are involved in international trade mm -hmm. and a further 20% when, we, when we've surveyed them have said we'd like to get involved in, in international trade so if we can keep the barriers uh, low or avoid them all, all together. We'll get yeah. a lot more small businesses involved in that. And so Brexit is a huge issue. And as much as anything with Brexit, and, and it is, this is the case for a lot of business issues, it often comes down to people just want certainty. They want to know mm. what's happening tomorrow, what's happening next week, what's happening next year. Because that's the only way we can plan. Yeah, absolutely. And that stability can be so, so important. Yeah. So how do you see the FSB influencing the business support landscape um, and how can any new or established businesses access your support? Yeah, I mean, the easiest way people can access FSB support is obviously to join us, but we're here for small businesses, whether they're members or not. And so a lot of small businesses might not realise it, but they would have been touched by the work we do, whether that's through, uh, recently we got the government to uh, not go through with plans they had to make tax that the actual tax uh, quarterly, you have to register, uh, report it quarterly, and this is quite onerous for small businesses. So any small business now has benefited thanks to FSB. Uh, but, you know, the other thing is, to have a look on, on online of what, you know, have a look at our website, see what we do. Some of it might be good for you. Also though, you know, if FSB is not right for you, do look, if you're a small business or any business, do look at the other organisations out there because you really will do better if you're supported by a business organisation. And someone like FSB and, and, and someone like the Chambers as well, who we're not for profit organisations, every penny we make goes back to our members. But I, I think, you know, what we really like as well, and what's, what's crucial to make the FSB what we are, is we need to hear from, from small businesses. They need to tell us what they want so we can act on it. One issue we're getting quite involved with at the minute, and a lot of local authorities are very interested in this, is looking at commissioning and procurement processes. And in particular, they're looking at how they can procure more services and goods locally, mm -hmm. because we know that's the way of, of keeping money mm -hmm. within the local mm -hmm. economy, creates wealth, creates jobs. And in somewhere like uh, Kirklees, that's, that's crucial. So we're actually beginning to talk to the local authority about that, and we're really excited about that, because we think that can really bring huge benefits to small businesses and hopefully some of them will be our members but actually just bringing this benefit to, to businesses and the communities they serve is really important to us. Great well thanks for joining me today Barney. It's been a pleasure it's been really nice to be thank to come you. in and talk to you. Oh thank you it's been really fascinating insight for us too and you're clearly passionate about small businesses and their growth and development as well um, and thank you for talking to us a bit more about the role that you play as the FSB in the small business community. That's great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Now that's all we have time for on today's show, but do join me again next week on the business programme.